power bar just died. The protection present light went out and the bar is no longer providing power. Now that's not good that it broke, especially because this needs to be on. Oh, good grief. All right, so we have, now the power bar died, we have uh, something in the stove died. Oh, that's not good, it's gonna be cold tomorrow. Okay. I'm gonna figure out what went wrong here and get parts immediately. All right, so we gotta figure out what's going on. Um, I have a suspicion that it's the igniter that died because that's the same sound it made last time when the igniter died and it was uh, initializing when it lost the power so I'm going to hope that it's, it's the igniter and I'm working quickly because there's a small flame in there right now so if I can disconnect the igniter and turn it back on and it works I can at least get it through the next two days uh, until I can get over to the store to buy parts if I don't have one I keep a lot of parts on hand I might have I might have an igniter all right so we're gonna check for things that look fried I don't see anything Nothing in our control board looks like it exploded, so that's good. Um, needs to be cleaned out a little bit. Um, okay, so our igniter connection is... This is snap disc. What's this? Is this the igniter? No, that's the fan. Um, that's not the snap disc. Where's the igniter connection? I've done this before. <laughs> Where is it? Hmm. Well, if we just take this, this has got to be under there, right? I need a flashlight. I'm probably only get about two or three minutes before we have a problem. open the window I might get some uh, CO2 coming in. It's a decent sized flame in there now. Yeah, that's the igniter down there. Okay, so if we just take we take this wire off Actually, it's got a plug on it. Let's just undo the plug. That plug. And we undo this. Oh. Snap disc broke. That's what happened. All right. The snap disc broke. Okay, so that's disconnected on that side. And this is disconnected on this side. So there should be nothing going to that igniter. Just leave that there like that. And since this is a manual stove, it should not care that this is disconnected and it should operate anyways. So 
and make sure that everything is safely removed from that circuit. Sit on the tile like that. All right, let me uh, just flip the, I'll blip the power real quick to see if we're good. together. I tell you, this has been a week of failures. Everything's breaking this week. Just this all convoluted here. in business partially I'll just plug this into the wall for now I guess because we have no more power bar okay well <laughs> not ideal can't shut it off anymore now, but uh, at least we're not going to freeze. I'll get this ordered right now. Snap disc. It's just completely deteriorated. I should go through and replace all of these this summer. So here's the disc. Got a bunch of mumbo jumbo on the back, I mean nothing to me. Um, let's get the information out of the parts diagram here. So this should tell us the temperature and the logic of the switch. So we need that one right there, which is number three, which is the ignition switch. That is responsible for turning off the igniter once a flame is present. According to this, it's a W660-0054 ignition switch. Okay, that's cool. So this is 120, and it should turn off, it should cut off at that temperature. Okay, so now I just have to find one. Um, they're out there, it's just a question of finding one locally. Do I need to find this tomorrow? No. I can go without this really for weeks. I, all I have to do is go over there, touch the wires together for the igniter to get it to start up, and then turn it on and pull it apart manually. Um, this is not a safety switch. It can run unattended without that. It doesn't matter. Um, 
In fact, just like the car failure earlier this week, if something has to break on the stove, this is the best thing to break because it really doesn't. This is just inconvenient. Now it's not going to start automatically. That's all. This is what we need. I'm going to get it from East Coast Hearth. It's uh, $24.95. I'm going to order two of them so I have a spare on hand. Now that we're not in panic mode anymore, let's fix this apparatus here. Now, I don't know what happened to the to the power bar. Whoops. This is still operating. It's got a battery in it. For the, for the time being, I'll just set this up over here where it was, and there it can do its thing on battery. So the bar, let's take this downstairs and take a closer look. Now let's plug this back in, and it says, line OK, but the protection present light has gone out. Now some bars continue to, to feed power once the protection is spoiled and that's not good. This one does not, which is good. This is designed correctly. Um, let's see. Hmm. So technically, surge protectors are really one-time use if you get a serious surge that goes through. Now I would have expected that it would have just blown the circuit breaker on here as opposed to blowing up the um, the protection because it seems like there was a dead short in there at least that's what it sounded like to me um, hmm let's see if there's any obvious signs of failure in here I've said on video many times I don't like circuit breakers I prefer fuses this is a fine example because this stopped power to the stove immediately. I was in the room when it failed. It just quietly clicked off. When I plugged it back into the wall, breaker didn't trip. I bet if there was a good old fashioned fuse, it would have gone as fast as this thing did. Aha! A fuse. I wonder if that's what blew. I can almost guarantee that's what it is. Hello? Oh, <laughs> the yep, the fuse blew. I rest my case. We should go back to using fuses. They're superior to modern circuit breakers. I can probably fix that other one. I don't think I'm going to bother. I'm just going to buy a new one. Yes, these are expensive, but I'm happy to support the company that makes a good product that works properly and is 
protecting my equipment and my house. Oh, I need to that. I think that this is $80 well spent to know that if something goes wrong with the stove, that uh, this will safely cut the power immediately. And that's, I mean, that's really indispensable for any type of electrical appliance. I've always felt like I was protecting my equipment by having everything plugged into one of these. Never really thought about protecting the actual place and everything else around it too, but I guess they very much do that. back in business. Got the part on order. I'll get this fixed in a couple days. I think what I'll probably do with this ISO bar is I'll just remove all the circuitry, wire in the outlets, and just use it as an extension cord. But needless to say, this ISO bar can be honorably discharged from service. It sacrificed itself to keep the equipment safe, me safe, the house safe, and it did so instantaneously which is way more than we can say about the stupid modern circuit breaker. I have no use for those. Everything should be fused.